Thank you for joining me for another IT Wire and Alex on Tech video. I have with me today Chris Degnan. He's the Chief Revenue Officer at Snowflake Computing. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Alex. Now, we've been at a lunch today uh, where you've been introducing uh, Snowflake Computing to some of the Australian media. But for those that don't know you, can you please just start off at the beginning? Tell us what Snowflake does and what's the fundamental problem that you're solving. Sure, yeah. So, Snowflake is a, is a SQL, uh, an anti-SQL compliant cloud database built from scratch. And kind of what is the fundamental problem that we, we solve? Well, we're analytical in nature. We help customers do analytics across vast different types of data sets. And ultimately, what drove Snowflake into existence is the fact that there was a there was a need for something to actually take advantage of the cloud mm -hmm. um, and be native to to the cloud um, from a data warehousing perspective. All of the existing data warehouses, whether they're in the cloud or not, were kind of built for on-premise systems. Mm -hmm. And Snowflake really took a different approach and said, "What if we built something very specific for the cloud? And and how would we build it?" And that's really where we started, and our and our founders really started the. Cloud. And we hear a lot about, or in the last year, I've heard a lot about this uh, hybrid cloud, where you sort of have one foot in your on-prem and one foot in the cloud. What are you, are you doing anything in that space? Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting is, is um, you know, our founders, and I was the first salesperson at Snowflake. I, I, I was selling Snowflake before there was actually any customers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, of course, I'm talking to a, a hundreds of different customers every week or every month. Mm -hmm. and, um, of course, when I first started talking to some of these large enterprises, that was the first question they would ask me is, hey, yep. when are you going to be supporting a private cloud so that we can do private and public? Hmm. And our founders were very fundamentally against that. You know, they, they said, hey, we are only going to build a product for the cloud um, that is public in nature. And, and so that the reason for that is they actually want to be in control of the software version that's out there. So they don't want to have 17 different versions of Snowflake on out there. They actually want to have one. Mm -hmm. And that really empowers the customer to focus on asking the questions and not managing the infrastructure. And that's really why they decided that we will never be an on-premise system We will or hybrid. Mm -hmm. We will exclusively be in the cloud. Now, we will we will support multiple clouds in the future, but today um, we're on Amazon, mm -hmm. and, and that's our, that's our go-to-market strategy is exclusively on the cloud. And the name Snowflake, it's very memorable. So what's the brief story about the, how the company was named Snowflake? Sure, so our, so I would consider one of our venture capitalists, uh, one of our founders, um, Mike Spizer from Sutter Hill Ventures. Mm -hmm. um, he, he, uh, he recruited Benoit Dajigal out, out, of, uh, out of Oracle, and both their, their kids were on ski teams up in Squaw Valley, up in, in Northern California. Mm -hmm. And they, they felt as though, okay, snow comes yep. from the clouds. Mm -hmm. um, there's a loose affiliation to Snowflake Schema. Um, and, and they just, they, they, they ultimately said, hey, you know what, this makes it easy for, for, for customers to remember, and that's ultimately what drove, drove the Snowflake Bay. Sure. Now, you've also got uh, the traditional database vendors, and you've got people who say they compete in your space, which is you know, the big Amazon Redshift, uh, Microsoft SQL, Azure Data Warehouse, Google BigQuery, and then you know the traditional plays, the Teradatas, the Oracles, the Verticas, IBM Netizens, and also the Hadoop installations. So, sure. you know, you already mentioned a little bit about what differentiates you, but what else really, you know, for the people watching, what crystallizes how you're different from all of those other guys? Sure. Well, I think it starts, it's really the fundamental differentiation for us, and it comes down to architecture. If you look at why, why we really focused on the cloud and, and built for the cloud, we built a brand new ar architecture. No database has actually been built from scratch in over 30 years. Mm -hmm. and, and our founders said, hey, look, they looked at the cloud as this appliance with theoretical unlimited resources. And any traditional enterprise data warehouse or database product has never been built with the cloud in mind. Mm -hmm. um, so they really had the luxury, quite frankly, that where you wouldn't be able to have that luxury if you had an existing customer base, whether you were at Oracle or Teradata or whomever, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to think that way. And these guys really did because we had no customers, right? And so they decided to build a database from scratch to say, hey, we're gonna build this brand new architecture that we call the multi-clustered shared data architecture and allow, and effectively what that allows us to do is have multiple uh, compute clusters access the same data at the same time. And, and from a business standpoint, the ultimate problem that we solve is we solve the ability for thousands of users to access the same data at the same time. And if you actually go into talking to uh, you know, folks with large enterprise data warehouses, the concurrency is probably the number one pain point that, that the customers have in the enterprise data warehousing space. And Snowflake really solves that problem almost better than any other database has ever solved that, including the on-premise systems. And I would say Teradata was, you know, 10, 15 years ago, was the the Ferrari of the industry, mm -hmm. and they're, they haven't been able to innovate like, like we have, and that's really kind of where Snowflake is, is really shining, is in large enterprises, uh, they have the ability to scale concurrency. On top of that, 
not only is it you know traditional data sets that customers actually are wanting to manage, they're also wanting to you know manage Internet of Things or or what we call semi-structured data yeah. or or formats of JSON, Avro, XML. Traditional databases aren't built to actually natively handle that. We Snowflake is, and we built that into our product. So whether you're a small ad tech firm that has tons of uh, clickstream data that you're trying to do analytics on, whether you're a large enterprise that has high concurrency workloads, Snowflake you know, has that option, that, that solution for you. And what's great about that is you could be a, a small, medium business that, that is, wants to spend you know, $200 a month. You could be a large enterprise who, who would want to spend a million dollars a month hmm. or has the budget to do that with Snowflake. We really empower our customers to do that um, because, because of our architecture, because of our elasticity, we, we charge our customers by the second. Um, of compute time and monthly storage. So customers, you know, we have customers that literally spend up, you know, 2,000 servers for five to 10 hours to load 100 terabytes of data and they spin that back down and they're not paying for the compute when they're not using it. And I think that's really um, unique to Snowflake and really no other vendor can do what we can do. You talk about separating compute from storage, which sounds a bit like separating church from state. It's even the same initials. So that's an example of that, right? Yeah, it's an example of that. And, and what I would say is even more so is that we, we really pioneered that. I think mm -hmm. if you look, if you look at you know prior to Snowflake's arrival in the marketplace, there was no vendor out there that was actually talking about separation of storage and compute. They actually wanted to do the reverse. Mm -hmm. They actually thought that storage and compute needed to be next to each other. And and Snowflake really pioneered that that architecture. And now you see you know everyone from Microsoft to Amazon to um, Google to to every you know every major database vendor saying hey we separate storage from compute well you know the good news is they can mark they can try to copy our marketing mm -hmm. but they can't copy our architecture and I think that's really been a huge value prop that we have to this day. So what are the types of companies that are employing your services and if you can name them who who are some of them globally and in Australia? Yeah, so Snowflake really started off in the in the ad tech world um, and we've done a really good job. You can go to our website at, at snowflake.net or snowflakecomputing.com. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can go check, you, you will read about some of our customer base. And I think if you kind of look at the, the nature of Snowflake, Snowflake has over a thousand customers today. Um, we have five global deployments. We have deployments, uh, you know, a deployment here in, in Sydney, Australia. We have a deployment, it's multiple deployments in the US and, and in Europe, and we'll continue our expansion. Um, if you look at where our, our, our nexus of the beginning of Snowflake, of, of where our customer base started, it started in the ad tech industry and the online gaming industry. So mm -hmm. companies like White Ops and companies like uh, Kickside, which companies you've never heard of, um, you know, have massive data sets, and they have they're collecting, you know, tons of uh, like what we said, semi-structured data, and they need to provide f fast analytics against that data set. So we started there, and now if you kind of look, you know, fast forward since over the past four years since I've started, mm -hmm. we've not only do we have small companies like that, that you know that are in the ad tech space, but we have traditional large enterprises, folks like Office Depot, folks like. Um, uh, uh, Capital One, fo folks like Sony Television. So it kind of ranges across across the gamut. And then here here in Australia, why are we in Australia in the mm. first place? Is we have a we have a customer called Blackboard, which which is in the education industry. And once what's, what's super important for for those customers is data sovereignty, is making sure that student data doesn't bleed, you know, the country of Australia. And I think that uh, for us deploying in Australia really became a necessity for our, our customer and our partner Blackboard and that's really what drove us to deploy here. So data sovereignty becomes a big deal um, and, and that's why we're in Germany, that's why we're in Dublin and that's mm -hmm. why you'll, you'll see us go in the future into Japan and Singapore and, and South America. You'll see that over the, the next 12 to 24 months or so. And one of the journalists at today's event was talking about how <coughs> smaller companies can use your services too. You're talking about some of the uh, workloads. So, what is, what's a workload that a small company might uh, em employ with um, Snowflake, and what's the sort of insight that they might get? Sure, I think that's a great question. I think, and it, and it, and it can be a small company or it could be a department within a large enterprise. Mm -hmm. I think very much our business model is not to come in and say to any customer, become the enterprise data warehouse from day one. I mm -hmm. think we very much have a try it before you really marry us, if you will, yeah. right? And so, um, you know. From a, from a person that, that is in sales, you know, and I run a sales organization and we have you know, 350 people in Snowflake, I am actually a consumer of, of Snowflake. And what do I look at? Well, I load Salesforce data, I load some uh, marketing information, I load some customer usage information so that I get a, get a 360 degree view of the customer. So you know, whether you're a, a, a small, medium business that you want to carry, you carry about you know, how many widgets you're selling, you care about you know, how your Salesforce is doing, you care about the effectiveness of your marketing campaigns, you can really start, the, the, the beauty of Snowflake is you can start for you know, $100 a month, $200 a month, there's no minimum entry point. Mm -hmm. That product that, that you're paying $100 a month, 
or is the same product that our large enterprises use. So Snowflake is a usage-based system and it empowers our users to really start small and we can grow with their business. So, so the use cases, like I said, range from you know, customer 360 uh, analytics to Salesforce analytics to finance analytics to all sorts of different kind of uh, data analytic projects, but from SMB all the way up to the large enterprise. And uh, there's a couple of uh, conferences that you'll be at. One's the AWS and one's your own. So briefly tell us about those. Sure. Yeah. So uh, first of all, Amazon has been uh, a tremendous partner. They are such a, you know, an amazing partner for us. And really, you know, we launched on Amazon four years ago. And I, I would never have guessed what a great partner they've been. So the, the, the Amazon uh, uh, the, uh, events that they do globally, the AWS events that they do globally have been a great event for us to advertise Snowflake and to their customer base. Mm -hmm. So I think... Um, we'll be at the AWS event in uh, April. 10th, 11th, and 12th of April. Yep. All right, 10th, 11th, and 8th of 12th of April in, uh, in Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, uh, May 9th and 10th, yep. um, we will be in uh, Sydney on Snowflake's, what we call a Snowflake City Tour. You can go to our uh, website, again, snowflake.net or snowflakecomputing.com and, and, and actually sign up for those events, but there'll be one in Sydney and one in Melbourne. Uh, and it's part of a global uh, analytics tour that we've, we've done. We actually kicked off the event, the city tour in London this year. Mm -hmm. um, we just uh, last week had an event in San Francisco where we had over a thousand people sign up and, and attend. Um, and really what, it, what, what do we do? We, we invite our partners and our customers to talk about how they're using Snowflake, the, what the partners, how partners like, like Talent and Informatica um, can get data into Snowflake and how, mm -hmm. how, how visualization tools like Tableau and and Looker and other BI uh, tools can actually uh, help help our customers visualize that data. And so as we get towards the end of the interview, I always have a standard set of three questions. And the first one is the future. Where do you see, how do you see the market evolving and Snowflake evolving over the next decade? Well, you know, outside of Snowflake, I think what, what's, what's amazing, you know, as they say, timing can be everything. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening in the industry, I, we couldn't be luckier, is that we see this tectonic shift in the marketplace from on-premise you know, data centers to moving away from those to the cloud. Mm -hmm. And so when customers move from on-premise systems to the cloud, they don't want to take their existing Oracle or Teradata system and just throw it in the cloud. They mm -hmm. actually want to think about how, how can they do it more effectively, more cost-effectively, mm -hmm. and provide more business value to their customers or their BI users. And so um, that that shift is, is really, we've seen an acceleration of that shift across both SMB customers and large enterprises um, over the past 12 to 18 months. And, and so, where we see this going is we think that the annual market spend for what Snowflake does is in roughly about the $50 billion market, mm -hmm. um, or it will be over the next five to seven years. Yeah. Um, so, so we think that, that, it, that Snowflake is really positioned very well to be the number one cloud data warehouse on the market and really you know, help customers really get more value from their data um, at a cost-effective manner very quickly. And so I think you know, if I'm, if I'm you know, a, a soothsayer and saying where I see us being, I say I, I think that Snowflake will be an independent uh, data analytics company mm -hmm. um, that customers will, will leverage across multiple clouds, across, you know, and be the global analytic data warehouse that empowers our customers to, to get more value from their data. And so my second and last question is always, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received to help you get where you are today? I think, I think you know, if I look at, at you know, my upbringing and my background and, and everything and, and our current values as a company, I think they're very aligned to, to how I operate, mm -hmm. is, is that, you know, honesty and transparency are probably the most important thing. Um, you, have to be, you have to be kind and humble. There's nothing, you know, a lot of times in Silicon Valley, uh, the valley is filled with people that, that think they are, you know, God's gift to, you know, to everybody mm -hmm. because they were at Facebook early on. Well, yeah. I'm certain there are some people like Mark Zuckerberg who deserve, deserve a, lot of, a lot of credit for that, but I think my, my perspective is I'm very fortunate to be a part of an amazing company mm -hmm. with, with such humble leaders. And, it, and so the, the, the best piece of advice that I, I take and I operate under is be humble, uh, be honest, and be transparent. And I think if you operate that way in whatever you do, um, then I think that will carry you really far. And so that's really my biggest advice to anybody. Yeah. That, that, and, and, and don't be afraid to, 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 if you're gonna go ask someone to do something, know that you will do that yourself. And I think those are things that I, I will find. So. Excellent. So what's your final message to ITY viewers and readers and to your current and future customers and partners? Well, I, I'd say that the number one thing that I'd ask our customers to do is, is a lot of people, when I first started selling Snowflake, everyone looked at what we did. And, and when I was out you know, preaching the Snowflake or evangelizing Snowflake, it was really about, you know, here's what we do, just try it. And mm -hmm. I would say that people didn't believe that we could actually do what we said we did. So I, I'd say, don't ever trust me, um, even though I'm a pretty honest guy, mm -hmm. don't ever trust me. 
Um, really come out and try us. You can come to our website. There's a free evaluation. We'd love for our customers to try it and make us earn, you know, earn, earn your business and, and please you know, try us out. I think that's the number one thing I'd say is like we have such a very compelling uh, technology. It's the best technology I've ever represented in my, in my sales career and it's really fun being a part of this company. So you know, come join us and come partner with us. So. Well, Chris, thank you very much for uh, coming to Australia and helping be part of the uh, ongoing launch of, of uh, Snowflake in Australia. Best of luck for the future. Thank you so much, Alex. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Right.